So we've looked at the general Claisen uh, condensation reaction, um, and the Claisen condensation reaction, as an example, is quite a um, a nice way of making a molecule that would look something like this: this um, uh, beta keto ester. <coughs> and um, so, looking at this, if we had to think backwards, uh, what, what's nice is that we can make that quite easily by a, a, a Claisen, uh, just by taking the uh, cyclohexanone and and then we need, on this ester part over here, we need to have some sort of leaving group over there. And, and actually the easiest one to use um, is to just take the dimethyl carbonate. Um, and the reason being for that is that this is easy, it's cheap, and uh, we can do this reaction at uh, thermodynamic conditions. It's okay as a leaving group. This ester is also non enolizable so there's not going to be any cross uh, condensations that are going to cause some problems. Um, so, so something like that is actually quite easy between two, two molecules. <clears throat> and uh, the ester group as a leaving group, um, uh, when the inlet comes in and kicks out the methoxy, that's actually fine. And, and Claisen reactions um, in a molecule that's, uh, where you have something, for instance, uh, for, uh, we'll call it an um, intramolecular, reaction, if you've got something along those lines, um, that works very well as well. So again, uh, we can deprotonate here quite easily, it's going to close in, we form a cyclic molecule and uh, that works quite well. However, um, if you're wanting to get two molecules to react um, where they're a little bit more complicated, uh, so in other words, I use the same example, uh, but now we're wanting to make a, a diketone, um, and I can put an R group over here, so this is not a an ester, but maybe something a lot more uh, complicated. We're wanting to form this bond over there. Um, the solution to breaking it down to an ester and a ketone uh, is actually not the best one to uh, to use. So something that looks like like this. Getting these two things to react with each other can be a bit of a problem, particularly if there's an inalizable position over there. So yes, we could use LDA uh, to form the enolate and then get it to work. But this is not a very reactive partner. It works, but it's not that reactive. Uh, actually, the, what would be nice if we did this disconnection is to have the disconnection with a, a more reactive partner, and that, of course, is uh, the acid chloride. So something that looks like that over there. Um, we know acid chlorides are incredibly reactive, and so it would be fantastic if we could use this as an electrophile uh, to give you that product over there. So we can, and that's a simple answer, uh, but we do need to be careful when we use this uh, in the reactions. Um, the first thing that we need to be careful of is that we should use the specific enol uh, equivalents. So um, we need to use things like our lithium enolate, um, we need to use uh, the salal uh, enol ether is good. Um, you can get them to uh, to react. Uh, a, a more typical one is actually the enamine or the aza enolate is also uh, possible. Okay, so each of those over there. We'd be taking the cyclohexanone, uh, we'd deprotonate with uh, LDA to do this one. Here yeah, we'd form the TMS enol ether first, and then our acid chloride actually will react, um, although there's some special conditions, but uh, let's not worry too much about that. Um, if you just show those reacting, it's okay. Uh, enamine, uh, we'd form the enamine, and the enamine is really good. It will react with the acid chloride. Um, it can react with the nitrogen, but it's a reversible process, so it actually ends up going on to the position that you want it to go on to, namely there, uh, and then the AZ enolates. And all of these processes, so they'll work with the acid chloride. Um, they work really well, uh, and they all follow the same principles that we've had to learn before in terms of also just think carefully about if this was an unsymmetrical ketone, what the difference would be. So a lithium enolate goes for the kinetic side, et cetera, et cetera. What you do need to be careful of is that actually um, this is a very powerful electrophile. And if you don't use a strong base, in other words, you do not form this uh, specific um, enolate equivalent, um, 
so if you, you're not using these uh, processes um, <clears throat> and, um, and you, for instance, use a weak base such as triethylamine, what you do is you actually go through a very similar process to the formation of the silyl enol ether. And that is the ketone oxygen is the most nucleophilic. And if you don't have a strong base present, um, the ketone oxygen is going to be isolated first by the, uh, by the acid chloride. And so we'll get an intermediate that looks like this uh, initially. And so this will isolate the oxygen, uh, and then the base, for instance, uh, triethylamine, um, can come in and deprotonate, and we end up uh, end up with the O-acyl um, uh, enol ether. Uh, so that's just one thing that you need to be uh, aware of. Uh, the uh, acid chloride can go on to the oxygen if we do not use a specific enolate equivalent. Um, and it is a little bit more complicated um, uh, than that. Um, this is the, the simple way to remember things, just that if we're under kind of weak thermodynamic control, very weak bases, uh, and we do not form the enolate, if we, form, if we can fully form the enol form with the enolate, it's going to go on to the oxygen. Uh, but if we have to preform the enolate, then it's going to go on to uh, onto the carbon. And it's driven by what mechanism is taking place. Um, the only two small things that uh, you won't see in this course, but I'll let you know anyway, is that uh, if you're using counter ions, so for instance, like sodium and potassium, so you're using sodium hydride, or maybe you're going to use potassium hydride to do the reaction, that actually favors the OA solation as well, these uh, counter ions, if you're not using lithium effectively. But that's something you don't have to worry about in this course. The main thing is that if we're wanting to do an acylation of an enolate, uh, so not using a Kleisen method, which is using an ester of some form, we can acylate with an acid chloride, uh, but we must form the specific enolate equivalent first. Lithium, all of these will work, um, perhaps, and maybe preferred or, or unpreferred, depending on the particular substrate. So you need to know um, why we would use uh, each of these under specific uh, conditions. Okay.